Hi guys, it's the Big Tech Show and my name is Benjamin Dada. On today's episode, I'm going to be speaking with the founder and group managing director of InterSwitch, Michelle Elegbe. We're going to be talking about InterSwitch's origin story, its evolution, and the big question on everyone's mind. Hi guys, it's the Big Tech Show and I'm super excited to have the Founder and Group Managing Director of InterSwitch here with me. Hi Michelle. Hello, how are you? It's nice to have you here. Same, yeah, uh, thank I think you. my biggest question for you is, you know, what's the origin story of InterSwitch? Because everybody has said their own, right? But I have the Founder here, so why don't I just get it live? Okay, I think InterSwitch for me uh, was, as a young man, three years after service. Okay. Uh, looking at the, the country, the continent, and having the opportunity to experience payments in, in the UK especially, felt that perhaps Nigeria deserved better. So I started thinking about this whole idea of retail payments. Uh, I'm an engineer by training, never done banking, never done payments. But I could tell by going to the bank, then um, starting the queue, getting tally numbers, queuing up to get cash, um, going home, taking the risk of being robbed. I just felt there was a better way to do this. And that is where the idea to start InterSwitch came from. So how, how did you proceed from the idea? I think the first thing was um, I tried to do a business case. Um, I remember our very first meeting at the Moor House in Ikoi, where we tried to engage with some of the banks CEOs and how the late Taya Dero and a few others tore my business case to pieces. <laughs> so I went back to the drawing board and this time around I got Accenture to work with us to really develop this. Accenture at that time did a lot of work with the banks so they knew what the banks were looking for and um, the idea I had was just a perfect match, okay? Mm -hmm. So a few months down the line, having spoken to some bank CEOs, been invited to one or two management retreats, the idea for InterSwitch really started, okay? Funding was the big issue. Um, unlike today, where there are 1,001 venture capitalists looking at opportunities on the continent, then I, I didn't know of any. I didn't even know of anything called venture capital then. They probably were not even focused yeah, on Africa. Yeah. So yeah. what we did was, luckily for us, there was a scheme by the central bank called the Smith scheme, the small medium enterprises scheme, where the central bank had said that um, banks should put, I think, a certain percentage of their profit aside okay. to invest in startups. So we tapped into that fund. What did they call it that time? These startups? No, 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 no. It was called the Smith for small medium enterprises okay. investment something. Okay. Uh, so we tapped into it. Uh, we needed, based on the business plan, 450 million rather than. Yeah. But we got 200 million because the scheme limited uh, investment to 200 million. Okay. So that's how we started. And um, the plan was for the company to be profitable in four years. How long did it take? A year. Wow. So one year <laughs> later, we are profitable. Yeah. And so having been profitable in our second year, we just had to sustain that growth. Okay. So the company has seen 18 years of profitable growth since then, yeah. I feel like clapping. <laughs> feel free. <laughs> how do you see your role right evolving or how has it evolved from all the years when you started going about with business plan to now right how has it evolved what is your day to day okay so initially i was um, ceo and well, i worked for chief sales plan okay so i was doing a lot of selling going from bank to bank trying to convince them to get onto the switch okay. and once we started getting some traction um, my role changed slightly uh, it became more of really putting structures, processes in place. Don't forget that at the time we started, there was no, no forerunner, nobody to learn from, really. Uh, so everything you knew you had to do. Yeah. We made lots of mistakes as expected. Uh, we were quite young then. None of us had 
any serious work experience. It was just a group of young people with a passion to change the environment we are in, believing that we deserve better, and that was just it. So today, many years down the line, um, my role has evolved, it keeps evolving. So I've had to move from being an entrepreneurial founder to a manager of business and so on and so forth, okay? So those things that you tend to take for granted at the early stages, processes are now required, okay? How you make decisions have to be a bit more organized and so on and so forth. So for me, the role I play now is, have a move to the group. Uh, we have CEOs who run line businesses. We have about five of them. We're creating a sixth one now. Um, they run the business from day to day. So I focus more on strategy, more, what, what I call where to play, what are those areas to focus on, and then they focus on how to win in those particular areas. Okay. So my role has really changed over the years. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Inters, which is said to be Nigeria's most used payment card, accounting for 18 million out of the 25 million in circulation. Right. So my question is, how did the company grow to this height? Okay, so I think a few things to correct. One, InterSwitch is not a payment card. InterSwitch deals with a lot of card businesses. Okay. Visa, MasterCard, American Express. So we're not the, we're not the card business ourselves. We have a card business called Verve, which is a domestic card scheme. Yeah. And I, I don't think your figures are correct. Those are quite uh, outdated. outdated figures. <laughs> I think the total number of cards in Nigeria today uh, issued by the banks should be in the region about 65 million and VEV has about 49% market share of that, okay? Uh, so that is a more correct view of where we are today. Um, but how did we get to where we, we, we are now? When industry started, we just wanted to build infrastructure. The thinking was that once we build the infrastructure, people will use the infrastructure. It's like you're in a community where there are no roads. Mm -hmm. But you know people need to move goods from one place to the other. So the thinking there was build the roads, people will move the goods. So we built the infrastructure, connecting all the banks, the goods were not being moved. And so we got into developing products. So one of the products we developed was Verve. And the reason for that was that we noticed at that point in time that if you look at the number of bank accounts, and you compare the number of accounts that had cards, it didn't make a lot of sense, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we dug further, we realized that um, Banks found it too expensive to give the traditional international card, MasterCard visa to their customers. Mm -hmm. So it was just for an elite population of bank customers. So we felt the way to solve that problem was to create what I call a cheap and cheerful card that met the needs of the market. Just to give you some perspectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At that time, I don't know what it is now, less than 5% of Nigerians travel abroad. Right. So in the recess of it, it was, it was a domestic economy that needed to be taken care of. And so we felt that 95% was big enough for us to create a domestic card scheme for. So we went ahead and we created the, the VEV card scheme, which is charged in local currency, designed to work within the environment and so on and so forth. Okay, But of course, having built infrastructure, we have a leave and let leave strategy whereby we allow competitors to use what we have built. So we are currently the, the processor for MasterCard. Actually, the, I think the biggest processor in the market. And uh, if you've been following the news, Visa has also invested in InterSwitch. So I think to grow the ecosystem, there has to be this idea of collaboration in different forms. So that is why I was quick to point out the fact that InterSwitch is not a card scheme. InterSwitch operates the infrastructure, okay? And then Verb is just one of the card schemes that run on that infrastructure for Visa and MasterCard domestically when they are used also around the infrastructure. Yeah, and I think that that's a very important clarification to give. Um, also, in Intouch Switch's business play, right, there's a combination of infrastructure and products, right? So you have a visa who is investing in Intouch Switch, but you also have your own card that you're pushing. So how have you even managed to grow both of them side by side? So do you feel like at some point, you're going to maybe fast track infrastructure and slow down product? or you would move products first and, you know, maybe become, quote unquote, stingy with the infrastructure. Okay, so, um, InterSwitch plays a very unique role and that unique role creates some responsibility on us. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about, we don't take decisions purely on the commercial Aspect. value we get from it, okay? There's this idea of growth 
for the ecosystem. Everybody wins if the ecosystem grows bigger. So you're right, we build infrastructure. Sometimes we leave the infrastructure and we go into the products and solutions. But sometimes, not, my, my understanding is that not, there's no one company that can build all the products that the market needs. Mm -hmm. You'll be very shocked when you look at the Nigerian environment. I look at, when you begin to look at key customer segments, even among students' population, you'll be very surprised at the differences you see. A product you build for a student in one university in the south may not work for the same student in the north. So you begin to see that it's not possible for one company to build all the products that is required, okay? In the same vein, when you even ask two people to build the same product for the same customer, they go about it in two different ways, yes. okay? So looking at that, therefore, and recognizing that InterSwitch cannot be everywhere, we took a view that that's why we crafted this our live and let live strategy. Okay, we build a highway, everybody should use it. If InterSwitch, if Verve is going to use the InterSwitch highway, Verve will pay. Yes. Just the way MasterCard and Visa will pay. We don't discriminate in fees, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the decisions we take from time to time is when we start a product and competition starts that same product, mm -hmm. we always have to have us ask ourselves the question, do we want to push it fully or is it time to retreat and let competition win in that space because there are other things to be done. Yeah. So if you have the bigger concept that the ultimate goal is we want to impact where we, where, we, where we operate from and not one person can do it, sometimes there's this tension between start something up but you know you're not going to go out the full hall but yeah. you start it, a lot of people, there are a lot of Nigerians who don't have jobs, okay? Yes. Young guys, smart. So once they see an opportunity, they will easily jump at it. Yes. So sometimes what we do, we just see it. Spark the fire. We spark the fire, yeah. they, it thing grows. Yes. So paste that, flutter away, some yeah. some part of sparking the fire. Yeah. Things are going all very well there. A lot of guys are doing stuff in, uh, in, in cryptocurrency. I know there are issues around regulation now, okay? Mm -hmm. But that is a spark also. At some point, maybe it may become very big. But for us, the infrastructure play will always be our, 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 our bread and butter. Now, if there are gaps, we'll go in. So there was a clear gap. Nobody was bold enough to yes. go in, so we went in. Yes. Yes. Okay? So if there are other gaps in the market and nobody is bold enough to go in, we'll go in. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate goal is to make our competitors, or our partners, as we like to call them, feel comfortable working with us because that is how we win. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. How have you managed to, first of all, you know, keep the people happy <laughs> and attract the right talent? Um, some people stay here for more than two years. In my time, you don't find people staying in a company for that long, right? People stay for five years. How have you managed to attract the right talent and retain them? If you ask me this question five years ago, I'll just start, I'll, I'll go to the board, I'll just start telling you how. To be honest with you, these days I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And, and, and let me tell you why. If I just this morning, one of my directors sent me um, something about Stripe. Okay. And he said something. Listen, Google is here. Everybody's in Nigeria. This is technology. You don't have to be fiscally where the technology is being used. Mm -hmm. Nigerians have proven over time that when it comes to technology, they are smart. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have people working in Nigeria but working for companies abroad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going to be paying them in dollars. You can't, yeah, you can't okay? <laughs> Not only they pay them in dollars, that dollars is now 400 and something to the Naira. Mm -hmm. So for the same dollar, last year, it would appear you have doubled somebody's... How are you going to compete as a little firm? Mm -hmm. So it is not an interest switch problem. And when I look at this problem, I look at it from the point of view of... Uh, they're going to put into Swiss stuff. Well, that's a thousand. The, the ecosystem is more than a thousand. Mm. So if you take everybody in Inter switch, we, we haven't done anything. So th there's a bigger problem. Another problem is a lot of our youths want to live abroad. They want to go to Canada. They want to go to the US. They want to go to the UK. So we're dealing with that also. And that has nothing to do with whether you're running a good company or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Yeah. There's just this migration that you have to deal with. So the way... I'm trying to deal with it in the case of interest wages, and I'll tell you what I, what we have tried. Okay, it worked for a season. The tide stopped working. Even for the same demography, it works for half. It doesn't work for half. So, in interest wage, for example, all our staff have shares in the company. Okay, and the promise is that grow the business, 
create value for shareholders. You're a shareholder yourself, you benefit from that value. At the same time, with your organization, creates a compelling purpose that, that resonates with your staff. Okay, when we started InterSwitch, we, did, we didn't pay a lot of money. We a startup. If you, have, if you start with 200 million, how much can you pay? But we're not losing staff, but people are going abroad there. Mm -hmm. So I think the key message for me is to take InterSwitch back to that point where people remember the purpose, why yeah. we are doing these things. It's not just for the money. The money will come. If you solve problems, people will reward you. But at the same time, you want to do things and people believe that they are here because there's a higher order of things, yeah, a higher yeah. calling that they're chasing. But you cannot take away issue of money. So even as I'm saying this to you, I, I, I'm actually thinking of how to pay good <laughs> good money. Yeah. But I also yeah. recognize that paying good money does not solve the problem. Yes. Okay, there are other things that you need to look at also. Thank you very much, Michelle. I've been okay. having fun and learning a lot. Um, in listening to your responses, I see you're very big on you know, solving a problem that human beings are facing. Why, why that? Okay, so a um, lot of reasons. Uh, sometimes it's never quite clear where this comes from. So I do a fair amount of travel across Africa and I see the, the way people live. And what comes to my head all the time is, we deserve better, we deserve better, we deserve better, okay? Better is not gonna come if you don't do something about it, okay? So, we took payments as one area that we felt, let's find out the pains. And I'll give you one example. You see, what people don't realize is that to move forward, we had to go back, okay? This whole innovation you are seeing, people had moved forward, but we had to go back. And the question was, everybody was talking about cashless Nigeria many years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember at the Muzon, one of these um, conferences, and I spoke about the fact that Nigerians don't need to eliminate cash, they just, they just want cash just in time. Mm -hmm. And everybody was talking, I was talking rubbish. But see, when you look at the people on the streets, their biggest problem was not how to move cash. How many Nigerians can afford 20,000 naira daily in their pockets? So you can't be telling me how to move cash is their problem. Mm -hmm. I can confidently put 20,000 in my pocket. I most people don't have 20,000. So that idea of eligibility cash was not the problem of the man on the streets. It was the problem of institutions that produce cash. But people thought they were solving the problem of the man on the streets, more they solving the problem of, of institutions, the central bank, the banks. So I thought maybe if Let's for once focus on the people on the streets, okay? And find out what the issue is. When you go close to them, they just want their cash just in time. And the technology that gives that is ATMs. So we have to go back to ATMs to create that affinity, okay? So people cannot take the cash just when they need it and the amount they need. So you don't have to take too much cash and be robbed on the way home. So that to me was a focus on people. So one of the things I learned is that if you really want to solve a problem, you have solve the problem for individuals, understand the individuals and deal with it. So coming to InterSwitch, our focus has always been what are the issues, the friction points that people in society face? And I bring that to our, to our staff also. When you work for a company like InterSwitch, would you leave InterSwitch regretting you ever work for InterSwitch? Or would you leave InterSwitch happy that you work for InterSwitch? Mm -hmm. I wanted people to leave InterSwitch happy. Mm -hmm. So this idea of share options for everybody, my driver has shares in the company, was my own way of saying, okay, at the end of the day, when you work hard, I don't think your salaries, no matter how huge it is, will take you home. Okay, it will help you day to day, but long term, you have to build wealth. And every Nigerian, every human being, every staff deserves to be able to build wealth, not just the leadership. And the only way I could think of staff building wealth was to make sure that everybody got a piece of the wealth creation, which is shares. So it's always back to the people, to be, uh, to be honest. When we move into healthcare, it wasn't because we thought money was to be, well, there was more to be made in payments. So what I did in healthcare, mm -hmm. it was difficult to convince the board to see where we are going. And we've started, and during the whole COVID period, we saw what that move did for us, okay? It, it was timely, okay? Today, there are state governments where, in rural areas, nurses have access to computers, and they can diagnose 
we don't have enough doctors. So if you want to solve problems, and you want to bring everybody to the cities, you have to take the solution to places whereby even if you're not a registered medical doctor, at least the system can help you take the right decision and do the initial. So it comes down to the people again. Yes. We do stuff in education. You want to move the country forward. Your citizens have to love science, mm -hmm. mathematics, okay? So we created Interest Park to encourage young Nigerians to get involved in science, mathematics, and so on and so forth. Again, because you need to have that, it doesn't have to be everybody, but there should be that crop of people who still believe in the power of technology. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wake up one day so you realize that the generation of people like also went to school and studied engineering, don't exist anymore. Everybody wants to be a musician, everybody wants to be a social influencer, mm -hmm. because that is what they see. But somehow, if you want to solve your problems, technology is something you cannot ignore. Finally, ask yourself, if you want to be successful, I have a lot of people who tell people, what do you want to be? I want to be rich. Okay, how? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares if you want to be rich. People care about the problem you solve. Yes. So taking time to ask the right question when it comes to deal with human issues is very important. Yeah. Because if you ask the right question and you get the right answer, the execution will be very, will be very, will be very smart and swift. And that's what we did in the case of payments. So what you spend time doing these days, try to understand people, how do you make this thing happen? People are not rich. It's not an environment everybody is rich or see they have a lot of money. So the solutions have to make sense. Yeah. And it has to be something that is democratized that everybody can go after. So that's basically why we keep focusing on the human, the human element, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for sharing that. Um, I, I can't end this interview without asking, you know, a big question, right? Um, at least twice, you know, we've seen different news and rumors about InterSwitch IPO, right? Um, and I was just wondering if there's something you could share with me and the audience, right? Um, what is it? Are we having an InterSwitch IPO? Um, are we doing a dual listing or are we doing an NSC or NYSC? Um, anything you can share about the InterSwitch IPO? Okay, so. You know, you said there's this big question. I know <laughs> nobody likes to answer big questions. So I'm sure I'm not expecting uh, a response from me on that. But uh, we've had a very good interaction today. So let me not bust your bubble. Okay. Let me tell you a few things, Thank okay? You. <laughs> so qu first thing I'll tell yes. you is, if it is true, mm. in terms of which I've been saying, we're going public, we're going public, we're going public, and we're not going public. Maybe it's time for people to stop worrying about whether we're going public or not. Mm. Hmm? Like answer number one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Stop worrying. I tried the other thing. <laughs> Stop worrying if we are going public or not. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you the things to worry about. One is interest which make an impact. Two is the ecosystem growing. And is it growing sustainably? Three, how we're dealing with the challenges of cybercrime that you cannot run away from when you go electronic, okay? And four, are we leaving the kind of examples that will encourage people to want to come into this fintech space and also contribute and excel? Mm -hmm. The answer to all of these four questions is yes, 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 yes. And if you do that, it's just a matter of time, things will happen. We are owned by private equity to a large extent. So it is true that at some point they will exit. What are the options typically open for people to exit? One of them is a bigger PFM comes to buy them out because yeah. they still believe in the growth story. Yeah. We do a deal like the kind of deal we've done with Visa. Okay. We'll go IPO, we'll do an IPO. So everything's on the table, but I'm, I don't live my life focusing on what is the next valuation. Yeah. Okay, that's not the way we started the company. We started a company on the lean budget. And we've tried to grow sustainably. There's lots of great opportunities. If I'm going to raise money today, I'm raising money for growth. Okay. Now, if IPO or whatever becomes the best way to do that, fine. Okay. So I think that's the way I would like to leave it. Sorry, I can't answer your question the way. <laughs> because, because the truth is that there's no we're going to do an IPO tomorrow or next tomorrow. That decision has not been made yet. Thank you so much, Michel, for your time. Pleasure. I really enjoyed our conversation. So you asked the big question about the IPO. Did you get your answer? This is the Big Tech Show. My name is Benjamin. See you.